Here's Palma for sale. That comes in field. He's chipped over to Riley. He's in the penalty. Oh. takes it first time. It's a wonderful, wonderful goal by Matt O'Reilly. Oh, what a season he is having. Hearts go to sleep. He goes in. Left-footed volley across Xander Clark. Hearts nil, Celtic one. Tati gets it back from McGregor. He's put it out to the right-hand side. And O'Reilly's totally free. Neuvenhoff goes across. It's infield to Tati. Cuts it across. And it's into the back of the net. Maeda is there to tap it home. The Hearts players are looking for an offside flag that isn't coming. Tati first time has set Palma away down the left and then he's crossed it to the middle for O'Reilly. It breaks for Kyogo! And Celtic are three in front! And it's Hearts chief tormentor, Kyogo Furuhashi, who nets the crucial third goal. Pass it to the left-hand corner of the box where Forrest has it. Cross with the left foot into the middle of the box. It's going to break back for Greg Taylor, who squares it across. Here's, oh, saved by the leg of Clark. Back to o, blocked by Rolls. It's frantic, and there's a Wata! He's called in! Celtic have their fourth goal, and that is surely that for Hearts. They've been spirited since the Shanklin goal, but Tomoki Awata has curled one in off the bar. And that is surely three points now for Celtic. Hello and a warm welcome to the Celtic Forever podcast. We're here to talk about Hearts 1, Celtic 4. Got John with me today to go over, which was quite a convincing win, I thought. Good game, enjoyed that. Celtic fluent. Back to their best, looking good. What did you think of the game, John? That was good. Very enjoyable game, I thought. Celtic fast out the traps, eh? Very fast out the traps. I thought they played uh, fantastic in the first half, a bit kind of. A wee bit more laboured in the second half, I thought, but overall it was a good performance, eh? I'm delighted with the result, of course. Yeah, I thought the pass was very slick, tidy, nice to watch. So it goes from Matt O'Reilly in the fourth minute, Dyson Mida in the twenty fourth minute, Kyogo in the fiftieth, and the Water on the eighty first, and obviously Warren Shanklin got a consolation goal for Hearts to make it Hearts one, Celtic four. So we'll go over the game bit by bit. But before that I want to mention Celtic Forever's gonna do a prize giveaway and the prizes are framed prints from some Celtic legends. So once a week, we're going to give away, give away a print of a Celtic legend. And all you have to do to win that print is give us in the comments when you think the first goal will be scored against Hibs. So we're talking the exact minute here, the 59th minute, 10 seconds, something like that. So when will the first goal be scored against Hibs? If you could leave a comment. And whoever is the closest in the comments to the exact time of the goal will win the first Celtic frame print. What do you think of that, John? Well, a good opportunity for somebody to get a free prize, you know. Anybody that's entering that competition, it's a good wee chance to get a, a free prize, of course. It's uh, uh, just to give a wee, it gives a wee bit back to the, the loyal followers of the podcast, you know. So, hi, well done. Yeah, so it's just to just to recap on that, the first goal, when will it be scored against Hibs? Obviously, for an, an example, the 20th minute and 10 seconds. We've got to give the seconds because in case two people get the same minute, obviously. So, right. so give, give 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 the, the as close a time as possible if you can, and just leave leave your uh, leave your guess in the comments, and uh, after the game, we'll we'll do the. We'll announce the winner of the prize. Okay, mate. All right, yeah, let's get into am the I game allowed, then. Well, I'm, before Sorry, you go on, am I, am I allowed to enter this? Uh, give, give us a guess, then. Give us a guess when you think <laughs> the, the first goal, whether it's for Hibs or Celtic, doesn't matter. When you think the first goal will be scored. On you go, John. Give us your guess. Uh, first goal next week. Yeah. I'm going to say... 11 minutes and 25 seconds. Okay, 11 minutes, 25. And you'll need to put that in the comments for us, John, in case oh, you do win it. And if you do win it, you're, if you do win it you're, not, you're not getting the prize. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding there, but I, that's my guess anyway. But obviously I can't get the prize. But 
No, good yeah. luck to who enters it. It's a, a good wee printed uh, photo there, so get your guesses in the yeah. comments, guys. Yeah. All right, John, let's get into the game then. Okay, the game kicks off as uh, your prediction was 2-1 to Celtic. My prediction was 2 nothing to Celtic. Both, is, both of us were well off the mark there. Game starts, and within three minutes, Celtic have scored. You know, a great ball from Palmer. What a ball that was. For about 35 yeah. yards out. And he passes it straight over the shoulder of Matt O'Reilly and hits it on the volley into the bottom right-hand corner. What a goal, John. What, what a start to the game. Splendid is all I can say about that. What, like he says, what a chip for Palmer. That was absolutely stunning, wasn't it? Right on to Matt O'Reilly's toe. First time volley into the net. one nothing. Celtic fans are ecstatic. Four five hundred and seventy of them. Aye, what, what a start to the game. Very unexpected. I was expecting a wee bit more for Hearts, if I'm being honest. But I sell Celtic straight for the jugular, wouldn't they? Right out the traps. Bang. Goal. So, lovely yeah. start for Celtic. Cloud9 I was on. Yeah, it was a great start to the game. And then Hearts came into it a wee bit around the 8th minute. They had a, a ball fizzed across the face of the goal and there was nobody there to tap it in. But that was as close to Hearts came to scoring in the first half. You know, a ball fizzed across the box. Nobody there, ball goes out for a goal kick. So, we move on. Maida, I was looking at Maida. I thought there was three or four crosses that were... They were not the great, let's be honest. You know, crosses right out of the park, crosses nowhere near the, the Celtic players in the box. I thought his crossing was quite poor. For the first half an hour anyway, obviously then he came into the game, but what did you think of Maeda's crossing in the game, John? I know what you're talking about. I did have a couple of wayward crosses straight out of the park and that, but that's Maeda for you, isn't it? You either get a 10 out of 10 Maeda, or you get a Run about a six, seven out of ten, my either. And the day was one of mm-hmm. the six, seven out of ten ones, wasn't it? He, he wasn't he, uh, wonderful, but still put in a shift. He's one of the players. He always puts his shift in. He does his bit. There's always something in the game that he does that affects the game. So, but like, I'm a big fan of Dyes and my either, as you know. But, but aye, he did have a few wayward crosses and right at the park. But no, he still played pretty well. I thought. Yeah, he played well, because it was only for the first 20-odd minutes. I thought his crossing could have been a bit better. But obviously got his goal as well. But we'll get to that. Nine minutes on the clock, there was a... Sorry, 13 minutes on the clock, there was a shot from Vargas from Hearts, and Hart had to save it. So it wasn't an outstanding save or anything, but he had to be there to save it. So Vargas has a wee shot in the 13th minute. That was another chance for Hearts. Then we have a, in the 19th minute, we have a shot from Maida from outside the box. Half decent save from Clark in goal. You know, it was more or less right at him, but he still saved it. So it was a half decent shot and a half decent save. And then we have another shot in the 21st minute from Palmer, who drags his shot wide a couple of feet past the post. And then comes the second goal, 24th minute. A cut back from uh, Hatate, straight to Maida, cut back, tap in. Obviously, the Hearts fans were shouting for offside, weren't they? But that was never offside, John, was it? No, no, my either was behind the ball. I could see it as it happened that he was behind the ball. I knew he was either on line or behind the ball. I could see that, but, you know, the Hearts fans are, you know, they screaming for everything today, didn't they? Everything. Absolutely everything they scream for. You can't breathe near their players, they're all screaming and... You could hear the language after them. Unbelievable. They're never like that against anybody else. It's just Celtic they're like that way. But uh, it doesn't, just it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Look, Dyson, he was well on side. Skelps it into the net. It doesn't scalp it, does he? He just trundles it the other line. But <laughs> it will take them all. Yeah, it's, you know, I know what you're saying about the Hearts fans because, you know... It was vile it was coming from the stands, you know, and there was no attempt from Sky to, you know, try and blank that out or anything, you know. It was, you know, you've got kids listening to that and watching that and they've been subjected to the, the language coming from the Hearts fans in the stands. Right. Yeah, I know what you're saying, they were screaming for everything as well. You know, the slights we touch, you know, the howling abuse at Celtic players constantly, you know. Anyway, that made it 2-0 to Celtic. Looking comfortable, looking good. 
uh, half time whistle goes. How did you feel at half time, John? I felt okay at half time. I just like I said, I thought Celtic played well in the first half. I think they controlled the whole first half really. Hearts had a couple of chances. Joe Hart had one safety mate, I think. But I did they feel threatened by Hearts at all? But they never parked the bus, which is good. So I, I take my heart after Hearts for that, being one of the teams that don't park the bus. Because we knew they would come out and try. And they did. So fair play to them. They came out and tried. Didn't they do them any good, right enough? But there you go. I thought Celtic controlled it. Even though Hearts were giving it a go, I thought Celtic were uh, fully in control of the first half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I agree with that. We move into the second half, and within 30 seconds of the second half starting, Celtic are awarded a penalty. Now, was this penalty awarded for the foul on Kyogo, or was it awarded for the foul on Hatati? The player got booked for it, didn't he, Cochrane? But I think that was for arguing with the ref. I don't think it was for the foul itself. But Cochrane did tackle Kyogo. But I don't think he was booked for that, because to me it looked like it was the foul on Hatati more than the one in Kyogo that the penalty was given for. Yeah. Sure. Well, I thought he was missing the penalty when he took when he stepped up. I thought, there's a chance he's going to miss this, John. What did you think? I well, I didn't think he was going to miss it, but I didn't feel... I don't know. I was, I was thinking, because he's taken that penalty, does that mean the penalty was given for the foul on Hitachi? Yeah, I know right. what I mean. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's the way that Celtic's been operating is when it comes to penalties right now, isn't it? Whoever gets fouled yeah, takes the but If it was a foul on Hattad, uh, Kyogo, sorry, then it was soft, I thought. Aye, aye that's what I was thinking. If, if that was a penalty for the tackle on Kyogo, it was soft. But I think it was given for the one in Hattati. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, Hattati steps up and hits the post. Penalty missed. Great chance uh, squandered to go 3 and all up. But I'll let you do the next part. <laughs> it was only a couple of minutes later. Once at the 50th minute, uh, Kyogo gets his goal, and then it's a cross from Palmer. Uh, breaks to Kyogo in the box. I think Matt O'Reilly tried to tap it in, but it broke to Kyogo. And he can't, he's not going to miss for there, John, is he? No chance, no. Uh, lovely wee finish to Kyogo. Right, Kyogo, sorry. Right place, right time, bang, 3 nothing, And that was it. That was a cold sweat stopped at that point. <laughs> Uh, it was comfortable then, wasn't it? It was, it was uh, you know, the fears had gone by that point, you know, because it, let's be honest, Tyne Castle was a horrible place to go to try and get a win. But the way the way, the way we played the day, the first half and parts of the second half, I thought we just played them off the park. They didn't have an answer to Celtic the day. So we move into the 55th minute, header from Maeda, straight at the goalkeeper. 56th minute, another shot from Rio Hitate. Just goes by the post. So, Pepper the goal with some chances, I thought, you know. But 3 nothing up. The fish off the pedal, I think, at 3 nothing, John. Aye, aye. It looked that way, I think. I think Celtic looked like. The game's done and dusted. We'll take it easy. Stroll about the park. And then, of course, Hearts come into the game with their goal for Shankland. That's right. So, what we had was a, a shot. In the 64th minute from Shankland, that Hart had to save by the post. Aye, I thought from that was a great save, by the way. That, uh... that was a good save, aye. Yeah. He done well to get to that, and I thought, you know, it's just not going to be Hart's day at that point. But a minute later, Shankland gets his goal, and to be fair to the guy, it's a nice finish. It's a lovely finish, aye. you seen the curl on that one, didn't you, when it showed you the replay uh, from behind? Mm-hmm. You've seen the, the, you seen the curl and the dip in that. That was a lovely goal for Shanklin. Well done, Shanklin, for that. Yeah, it was a nice finish, I thought. You know, possibly the only thing that Hart's done all day, really. You know, then we make the substitutes. I've got uh, Hitati on for, off for Awata, sorry. We've got Palmer off for James Forrest. Right. And then we get, we get to the 78th minute and you've got the Hearts fans screaming their heads off for a penalty that comes off Liam Skill's back. You know, what, did, what is it they actually saw? Nah, they must, they must have thought he had an attempt at saving it or something. I don't know, but 
No, never a penalty that, you know. You can kind of get a penalty for the ball hitting half the back of somebody. What is it they're <laughs> wanting? The fans are ridiculous, by the way. Honestly, <laughs> every single wee thing is contended with their fans. If a Hearts player just if a Hearts player just slips anywhere near them, they're screaming for a penalty, and it's in the centre circle. <laughs> I know, I know. No, they're just. Uh, I, I don't know. As with Hearts fans, are just are they not used to watching football or something like that? Do they, I think they don't know the rules or something. Mm, well, they were screaming for that. Obviously, it was. It didn't even get looked at. You know. Uh, that's how bad it was. The, the referee didn't didn't even go to VAR to have a look at it. Okay, then we go to you know the second set of substitutes. We've got Maida off for Yang, and Koyogo off for O. He comes out of the park for another substitute appearance. I think that's his about his seventh substitute appearance this season for O. He still no scored the goal. So we get to 80th minute, sorry, and the combination play run about the edge of the box with. It was beautiful to watch, you know, quick combination play and then ended up with a shot for Yang, obviously. His shot went by the post, but some of the play was stunning to watch, John, the day. There was a lot of, I, later on in the game, there was a lot of intricacy with Celtic players. That the, the one touch, pass and go stuff was lovely to watch. Even when the subs came on, I thought, that's a game, it's def- the game's died, but I think maybe the subs gave, gave them a wee kind of a wee bit of a lift, maybe. But I don't think Celtic <laughs> really came out of second gear the day, did they? No, it was easy street. I thought uh, it was a canter. It was a canter for the first minute to the last, really. And the only thing was that goal that Shankman scored. And that was a wonder goal, so there's no much that you can do about that. But no, no, Celtic never came out of second gear, as you say, John. No, no, I thought Celtic were really comfortable the whole game. Hearts did hit come into the game after they scored. I thought it gave them a wee bit of a lift. And they still, and uh, I'll say it again, fair play to Hearts. They kept trying to attack, unlike every other team in the league. Yeah. You know, they did depart the bus. And I like that. That's what, that's what I respect about uh, Hearts. They always give it a go. But then they've got the danger of Celtic exposing that. And that's exactly what Celtic done. That's true, yeah, that's true. And then we get to the 81st minute. Awata's goal. O has two chances at it. Keeper saves it twice. And then it breaks to Awata at the edge of the box. And that was a lovely wee finish as well, John, to make it 4-1. Uh, and off the post, and off the bar, bounces down off the line and up into the net. <laughs> I like the kind of goals. That was a nice finish, I thought. Uh, from Awata, who I think is who, who I think is a half-decent player for Celtic, actually. I, I thought a lot I did really well when it came on. I thought uh, that finish was lovely. I thought that was a beautiful finish. Like he says, oh, yeah. failed again. He missed a shot right in front of the keeper. Right in front of the keeper. How can you miss yeah. for there? How can you miss for three yards out? It's quite poor for a striker's point of view, I suppose, John. It's That's what the strikers get paid for. It's for putting the ball in the back of the net. And to be throwing the goalkeeper like that and... and to hit it straight at him. The boy's just lacking in confidence, I think. Aye. Uh, well, look, we all hope he gets better, but as I keep saying to you, we don't need a striker that doesn't strike. I know I keep saying that, but that's true. It's, uh, to me, it's flashbacks of toast, Tony... To toasty. <laughs> Tony Cascarino. <laughs> it, was toasty, it was toasty, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it toasty Cascarino. It reminded me of him. Uh, Cascarino, nightmares. Uh, right, aye. Right. Yeah, but, so, 85th uh, minute comes along. We've got a, uh, an o, uh, another O shot. Uh, it's a cross from James Forrest, who I thought play, played okay when he came on, actually. There's another O shot, and again, saved by uh, Clark and Goal. So, he's had a couple of chances. O, and he had, he's hit all three of them right at the goalkeeper. Okay, so aye. the games begin to, begin to fade, fade out. 85th minute. Nothing happens. Until we get to... What do, you, what do you think of this one, John? The 93rd minute, right? We've got a yellow card for a water. For, and I mean absolutely nothing, John. It's it's, it's, a, it's it's two players together in the middle of the park going for the ball. The, back, the guy falls down. And a water who's only been on the park for, I don't know how long, 20 minutes or something, he gets a yellow right. card for absolutely nothing. 
And then you've got Cochrane, about two minutes later, does the same tackle. And it's play on. I no, think no, it, was no. worst, it, was a, it was a worst tackle. But the referee just plays on. I, I, just, I don't know what these referees are seeing. Aye, aye. I know, I know the one you're talking about. What can you do about it? It's, you know, it's, it's a nothing tackle. Fair water. There's nothing in it at all. But what can you do? That's, that's, you've got no control over these referees. Look, we know the officials in Scotland are really poor. This is, this is a big problem in Scotland when the officials are really, really poor at officiating the day, I thought, again. But mm-hmm. just, well, not really poor officiating the whole game, but there was a couple of incidents I thought that's poor refereeing. And if he gave that penalty for the tackle on Kyogo, I'll say that for Celtic as well, that was poor officiating if he gave that penalty for the tackle on Kyogo. Because I didn't, I didn't think that was a penalty. If, if that was indeed the tackle that he gave the penalty for, I can only say, I only think it was the tackle on Hitati the penalty was given for. That's right, because the Sky cameras refused to show you the tackle on Hitati. It only showed you the tackle on Kyogo. So we don't know. No, you know? it was a soft penalty if it was for the tackle on Kyogo. I've just said that already, but uh, aye, aye. No, the poor, poor officiating. Mm-hmm. All right, so we'll go to them. The final, the final whistle goes. The game's over. Comfortable, comfortable as you're going to get at Tyne Castle. Four one one. We we'll go back down the road with the three points. Seven points clear at the top of the league again. Not a problem. Brendan's Brendan's got it sussed. So we move on to the man of the match. And who are you giving it to, John? Oh, look, there's a few decent performances today. Big Carter Vickers was good. Liam Scales good as usual. Callum McGregor. Uh, Rio Hitati had a few awkward wee moments with him, I thought, but he still played well. But I'm getting the man of the match for me the day to no uh, surprise, Matt O'Reilly. Mm-hmm. That's the, and Matt, I mean, Matt, Matt O'Reilly had a great game the day. Again, I thought. Mm-hmm. Well, I totally agree. I mean, it was a man of the match performance, I thought, but I was thinking about giving it to Hitati. His wee flicks and his wee turns and his vision is unbelievable, you know. But he missed the penalty, didn't he? So uh, I suppose you've got to give it to Matt O'Reilly. So I'm with you on that one, John. I'm giving it to Matt O'Reilly as well. And I think that was a sponsor's man of the match. Aye, I think it was. Aye. Um, I think Matt O'Reilly's deserving his man of the match award. I thought he played really well. Took his goal fantastically as well, I thought. I'm not saying Hattati, he, did, he played really well with the Hattati. Brilliant player, absolute magician. Uh, I'm, I'm, the reason I'm, I'm not getting Hattati my other match is because I thought Matt O'Reilly was the outstanding player. The three amigos in the midfield, didn't it? McGregor, Hattati and O'Reilly, the three of them are outstanding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah they were. Let's, let's go through this. Uh, some uh, 1 to 10 scores then, John, since uh, we're mentioning that. We'll, want to, we'll start with Joe Hart. Uh, Paul Arthur yeah. says, when... "Sorry, John. No, nothing. Now you go. Now you go." He put off the saves when he had to, I suppose, didn't he? He had to do what he had to do. Seven to ten for me for Joe Hart. Never had much, did they? To be honest with you, um, he put off two or three saves, John. He put off a couple of decent saves, I but it was never really tested that much. But what he had to do, he done it, didn't he? He let one and. His distribution was great. Again, I think Joe Joe Hart does, gets overlooked for his distribution of the ball. No, his throwouts are amazing. I think Joe Hart. How many attacks yeah. does he set up? He's, I mean, he still get quality about him. I'm getting Joe Hart a seven as well. I think aye, a good game for Joe. Seven out of ten. Yeah, Alistair Johnson. I thought we played well the day as well. He hardly let anything past him. So eight out of ten for Alistair for me. Aye, uh, no one of his best games, of course. Still played well, but no one of his best games. I'm getting Alistair a seven as well. Uh, Carter Vickers, eight to ten, solid as usual. Nothing else to add there, John, eight to ten. Aye, solid performance for big Carter Vickers. But he played really well. I, I'm, I'm on a eight to ten as well, I think, for Carter Vickers. Yeah, scale seven and a half for me, eight to ten. I thought, thought Shankman. On a few head duels against him the day until he got the measure of him, and then Scales started winning the 
uh, head head battles against them. So seven and a half for me for young scales today, John. A couple of wee dodgy moments for Liam Skills today. Nothing drastic, right enough. Nothing that caused the uh, Hearts to go and attack or anything like that and score a goal and put us under any pressure. They don't think they don't think they did any big mistakes like that. But uh, seven out of ten for big Skills today for me. Yeah, yeah, half decent performance again for Skills. Uh, Greg Taylor. Uh, funny one with Greg. He was some parts of the game he was played really well. Sometimes he gave the ball away. I'll just play it safe and give him a seven. Aye. Aye, I'm, well, I'm not giving him a seven. I just thought he, had, he wasn't getting as involved as some of the other players. Um, that's six for me for Greg Taylor today. Mm-hmm. All right. Fair to John. Uh, Carl Mack, eight out of ten. Outstanding performance today. Controlled the entire midfield. Uh, he was playing, uh, watching Callum today. You know, I actually looked at Callum McGregor today and I thought, it looks as though he's bulked up a wee bit. But I mean, no, he's always looked a bit like that, though, isn't he, Callum McGregor? Um, he's never been skinny or anything like that. He's quite a strong wee player. Huh? I thought he played really well with Dave Kalmack. Captain's performance, 8 out of 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well done, Captain Kalmack. Uh, OK, the front uh, two midfielders, or the forward two midfielders. Um, who have we got? Matt O'Reilly. And in the match, 9 out of 10. Guy was outstanding, and yeah. his goal was his finish. His finish was out of this world. That was world class. Aye, oh, Matt O'Reilly's my man of the match as well. So nine nine out of ten for me for uh, Matt O'Reilly. Thought he was, mm-hmm. I thought he was just a, easily the best player on the park today. The three midfielders yeah. there were all, all, all fantastic, but Matt O'Reilly edged it for me. Nine out of ten. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Then we've got Hatate who missed his penalty, gave the ball away a few times, but then, you know, everything else he done in the game is brilliant. Just every wee touch, every wee, every wee flick, every pass. The vision in that man is, you know, we've got a player on, the, on our hands there as well. I'm going to give him 8 out of 10, even though he missed his penalty, John. So 8 out of 10 for Rio for me today. Aye, oh, we know he's a lot better than what he played today, but still had a good game, uh, Rio Hatate. Probably my favourite player at Celtic, to be honest with you. Uh, techni- technical wise, or technically, he's probably my favourite player at Celtic. Uh, but the day I thought, no the best, no the worst, still had a really decent game, was getting involved in everything, seven and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, Palmer, couple of assists, you know, he's, he's crossing, he's probably. He's got. He's he's a player. That boy. He's. I know he is lacking in a bit of pace, right? We well know that. But as you said in one of the previous podcasts, you don't need to have a lot of pace. All you need is that vision, and he's got that vision and that skill. So, Palmer he sort of came out at near the end of the game, didn't he? So seven out of ten for for Palmer for me. Aye, aye. That, listen, his assist for a rally was absolute class. Absolute class. That was. Um... And that's just a glimpse of what that guy's cap- capable of doing, you know. He's, he's I've actually got a winger that can put in a cross and pick a pass out. I thought he played pretty, pretty well in the first half. Faded away in the second. Seven for me, for uh, Palmer. Yeah, the seven for uh, Maida. Seven for me. Uh, seven I'm giving Maida, John. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? No, he's done, done his usual chasing back and all that. That we wasn't on the ball much today, Dyson in Maida, but he got his goal as well, of course. Mm-hmm. And right place at the right time, bundled it over the line. But it just wouldn't be the same without real hit. Uh, sorry, Dyson Maida in the team. Mm-hmm. I love him. I think he's brought all the Japanese players, all of them, but uh, six and a half for me for Dyson today. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I love Dyson enough. What a player to have in our squads and in our team. Um, okay, Kyogo. Yeah. Does his does his usual, doesn't he? Shutting down, gets his goal as well. So it's uh, he he done okay. He, he done what he had today. He was in the right place at the right time to bury his goal. Seven and a half out of ten for me, John, for Kyogo. Aye, he did, like, like you say, he does what he has today. Puts the ball in the net. That was it. That's all you need for Kyogo. He's got a good record against Hearts. Pretty quiet game today. 
wasn't getting much service really to be honest with you. But it, for what he done, he got the goal basically a nice wee finish. Put the game to bed really for Kyogo. I'm going to give him a seven out of ten a day for wee Kyogo. Mm-hmm. All right, that's your one to eleven, John. We've scored there. Uh, I'll just quickly run through the subs. Awata gets seven for me. Forrest gets six and a half. Yang gets four. O gets four. Uh, and did them else come on? Was it just the four subs? Remember, I think that was it, wasn't it? No, thank you. Oh, no, no. Bernardo, Bernardo, for, aye, Bernardo you. came on for. Uh, so he did. Three for him. Sorry, four for him. He never had he never had much time on the part, did he? So four for him. Nah. Forrest did okay. I think Forrest did okay when he came on. I gave him a five. A water, six. But no, Yang, I didn't do much, Yang, did he? Um, of course, he had a chance, didn't he, as well, but no, nah, he never did that much. Still like Yang, though, I think. Still, there's a good player in there, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay, that wraps up the post-match, John. That wraps it up. Brilliant yeah, what today. Do you think uh, of that? What do you think of that uh, Japan player, by the way, that plays for Hearts? Before we move on. I think he's going at Celtic match that one. I was going to say to you, when, when Oda came on, there was a bit of a stink. <laughs> I've been keeping that one all day. <laughs> oh, that's the worst one I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> uh, um, no, the boy done all right when he came on, but he's obviously no. Uh, he didn't get a game for the stars, so he can't be uh, first on the right. Smith's list, you know, but. Uh, all right. Anything else you want to add about the game, John, before we wrap that up? Uh, no, really. It's just a comfortable performance for Celtic, I thought. It's just The only thing I could say is when Hearts scored the goal, let them back into it for a wee bit. It brought the tempo a wee bit up again for Hearts, but Celtic were comfortable. They cruised it, really. Second gear the whole afternoon. Didn't they need to get into third gear and still beat them 4-1. Fantastic performance. Yeah. yeah, things are looking good under Brendan Rodgers, aren't they? Things are looking Really good, you know, going to Ibrox and everything else we've done this season, you know. And I heard the commentator today saying, so apart from the St Johnston game, we've won every other game, so if we'd have beat St Johnston, it would have been a clean sweep. Aye. Well, you know, some, st- some start, isn't it? It's a fantastic start for uh, Brendan Rodgers. And any doubters that thought it was a bad idea to have Brendan Rodgers back, just look at what he's doing in the in the league right now. He's brushing everybody aside. He's got Celtic playing better football than Ange did, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. That's nice to watch. Um, so, no, look, I'm a big fan of Brendan Rodgers' style of play, so, as you know, we're both grateful that he's back and long may he remain. That's all I can say. Mm-hmm. Yep, get him tied up in a long-term contract, and uh, Okay, mate. All right, we'll leave that there. So I'll just go through quickly a few quick, a few of the short comments. Also, this is it. from the podcast we done last night. Aye, aye, aye. It's pre, uh, pre-match. Um, okay. Well, love the new intro, Xander. Another good lesson. Hail, hail. That's for UD. Thanks, UD, for that. It's always on the channel, leaving yeah. a comment. Cheers, my man. Aye, the new intro is good. Well done, Xander. You did a good job on that, the editing and stuff. Thanks very much. Um, Appreciate that, John. I need bother so Xander does uh, a lot of the work on this. So we appreciate the work that he does. So the next one is Paul McComb once again. How are you doing, Paul? And thanks for your comment. It's uh, well done, lads. Highly entertaining podcast. We're up for the fight. We will take them apart. How right was Paul? Paul was bang on. You know, that's we did take them apart bit by bit. Not a problem, you know. <laughs> right through from that first minute to the 94th minute, we took them apart. So, yeah, Paul, excellent comment. Well done. Guy showed confidence and he was right. So, yeah, good comment. Aye. Aye. Thanks for your comment, Paul. You were spot on. We took them apart. Well Cheers, done, Paul. mate. Hail, hail. Yeah. Uh, Mad about football, another regular. Matt O'Reilly, different class. Green Brigade back as soon as possible. Couldn't they agree more? I think we, uh, the Green Brigade, what do you think of the Celtic fans today, by the way? Ah, they still made their noise, you know, they still 
still did their bit for the team. Uh, good backing for for all the fans that were there. Was it five hundred and seventy or something? Five seventy, I you think know. it was. Right? Uh, so they made their noise and uh, they put the Hearts fans to shame. So, yeah, well done the Celtic fans that went to Time Castle the day. Aye. Listen, the Hearts fans do a good job of putting themselves to shame. Anyway, next comment. It's all Ghost Tracker. Okay, <laughs> hunts oh, the ghost in. Yep. They like Ghost Tracker. He's always on the channel, leaving a wee comment as well. Another regular. Mankey Mob, four home games out of five fixtures discussing. Well, that is something we talk about all the time. Celtic, past five games, well, if you count back a few games, four games out of five are away fixtures. It is disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. Whoever picked these fixtures, it's a very strong uh, feelings on that for me, Xander, how they've got four out of five games at home. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, honestly, that, that is, is ridiculous. That is, yeah. Aye. Great comment, Ghost Tracker. You know, next week we'll go uh, Hibs away. That's a fourth away tie in five games. It's bang out of the order. But we're coming through it, John. And that's, you know, this is all going to turn around in the second set of fixtures. They're going to have all these away fixtures and we'll be at home. So hopefully we can get past Hibs on, uh, at the weekend. Good comment, Ghost Tracker. Thanks. Aye, good luck with the ghost busting, Ghost Tracker. Thanks again. Um... <laughs> And next, next we've got, uh, I think, Patrick McCauley. I think he's a, he's a new boy for the channel. Thanks right, for coming right. out to the channel, Patrick. Cheers, Patrick. Uh, the orange represents no Tims allowed. And VER, example, is a penalty to the, the Rangers. Bye. Well, I don't, I don't know what he's talking about there. The, the orange represents no Tims, but <laughs> fair enough. Thanks for the comment, Patrick. Uh, VER, yeah. example, is a penalty to Rangers. Right. It's fair enough, Patrick. All he's, basically, all, he's, all he's basically saying is, you know, Rangers are going to get all the dig-outs they're going to need to keep them in this league title race. So, uh, I agree with that. They'll get, you know, look at last weekend against Mirren, penalty, red card, not a problem, VAR, yeah, boom, boom, boom. There's three points, keep you in track. So that's what he's talking about, I think. Aye, aye. Anyway, you've got another comment after that. You left another comment. Uh, let's kick ass and move on. He'll, he'll call you big. Couldn't agree uh, now with that. Thanks for that, Patrick McCauley. Thanks for yep. your comments, mate. And don't thanks, forget Patrick, to enter the competition, Patrick, if you, if you listen back. Yeah, competition. Can I, can I go on about that? The new John, you finished with the comments? Uh, I've got a couple more to go, I think. Yeah, there you go. On you go. Uh, I'm well, dying to get this a... competition up and running. All right, well, <laughs> I'll, make, I'll, make, I'll make this the last one then, Xander, okay? It's Elaine, as Thank usual, you. always on the channel. Elaine 2367. Two, uses uh, words that we kind of use in this channel, like, it rhymes with buns. Um, All right. <laughs> right. So, so she basically says, buns, world beaters again, I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was always going to happen with our two home oh, games. Oh, they're back, yeah, that same back, aye. Yeah. Playing against Hibs. I mean, well, the only thing that's missing for Hibs was the mattresses for them to lie down on. Anyway, <laughs> buns are world beaters again, I see. That's more like it. Keech talk. Keech? What does that mean? I don't know. Stacey Keech? <laughs> I think I she know. means... I, I, think she, I think she means Keech. Uh, All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, listen, if Keech anybody talk. can tell us how the proper spelling for the word Keech, let us know in the comments, but I don't think it's spelled Keech. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't think so. That, that's more like it. Keech talk. Right. I like Stacey Keech, by the way, Elaine. It's a good actor. Um, <laughs> she, she says, Mon, come on, the Celtic. 2-1 today. Xander and John, heel heel, everyone. Thanks for the comment. As usual, Elaine, it's always appreciated. We really appreciate that. And heel heel to yourself. Yep. Cheers, Elaine. Okay, mate. Thanks for everybody that left a comment. It's you know we'll read out as many of the comments as we possibly can on every podcast. And speaking about comments, get your comments in with the first goal. What time the first goal is going to be scored against Hibs next weekend? You know, eleven minutes twenty five seconds. That's what I'll say. Eleven minutes twenty five seconds, and whoever's the closest gets that 
framed uh, legends print out. You know, we'll get it posted to you within a day or two. So leave a comment with what time you think the first goal will be scored next weekend. And it can be a Hibs goal, Celtic goal, it doesn't matter. Whoever scores first, what minute will that goal be scored? And we'll get that. Just leave a comment and we'll get... Whoever's closest will get that price sent out to you, ASAP. All right, Tim, John. Are you up to the night? Oh, I'll just watch a wee movie, I think. That'll be it for me. Um, no, the competition, uh, good luck to everybody in the competition. It will, the prize will be sent out to you, so... Um, but don't forget to make it your exact time. You have to include the settings as well, like Xander says, in case somebody leaves the same time as you, but the settings might be different. So it's to the nearest second, really. Aye. Um, I think Xander stole my time, actually, 11 minutes 25. I'm sure I said that. I could be wrong, but... <laughs> Uh, well, well, it's only a guess, and it? it could be seconds in it. So whoever wins that prize, you know, put put uh, put your seconds in the comments as well. So whatever minute it is and the seconds, it's just in case somebody has that same minute as you, so we can give the one person the prize. So get your comments in uh, just now, and we'll we'll do the prize draw on uh, Saturday. Is it Saturday we play next week, John, or Sunday? Saturday, sir. A three o'clock kickoff for an away game. So there you go. It's three o'clock next Saturday at Easter Road. Aye, three o'clock kickoff Saturday. So we'll do the we'll, we'll do the prize draw on Saturday on the post match podcast. Then John, it's uh, that is a funny time for a, a Saturday kickoff away from home. With us. obviously it's not on Sky, is it? So that, that's right. There's a TV blackout. I forgot about that. So the game's not been shown on Sky and it's not been shown in pay-per-view either. So it's just a normal Saturday three o'clock kickoff. Aye, that's, that's the way it is. So see what happens there. I'll go for nine minutes thirty seconds. I'll change mine. So there you go. All right. All right, mate. Okay. Uh, good luck to everybody in the prize draw. Uh, we'll see you in midweek for the Atletico Madrid game. And I appreciate you coming on, John. Thanks a lot, buddy. Hi, uh, thanks, Andrew, and uh, always good to be part of the podcast. And I'll speak to you probably Tuesday or or Wednesday, mate. So all the best and heel heel. All right, heel heel, man. Cheers.